Um, so this is just a video to explain the Bloom Water Spreadsheet. Um, I'm trying to do kind of a step-by-step -step, um, approach to it. Um, and I'm also trying to take a kind of a, a simplistic approach to it. I mean, there's a ton of stuff in here. Um, the guy who did it uh, knows a, a lot about water, I'd say. I, I um, don't have a clue about all this. However, I do know you know, I've, I've worked out how the, the program actually works and it is a bit daunting if you're not sort of used to using kind of technical stuff like this. So um, just to kind of get you started on it is kind of the, 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 the idea with this. And I'm really uh, ignoring a lot of stuff. So first of all, I've got to ignore the instructions tab and the water knowledge tab. Obviously, you can read those. There's a lot of stuff in there. Um, next thing I'm going to ignore, well, I'm just going to explain this, the adjustment summary tab, it's really just, um, as far as I can make it, it's just a, a, a place to, to show your, your um, additions when you finished um, doing all the adjustments. So, show you what grams to put in, etc. Um, I'm also going to more or less ignore these two tabs. The reason being, um, in my case, I can because I'm using 100% RO water, for instance. So I don't, I don't, I don't need to put in a water report, um, and um, so I can literally ignore this particular tab. Obviously, um, if if you if you use uh, if you if you've if you're not using RO water or something, uh, you you would need to get um, a water report first. Otherwise, it wouldn't make any sense to use this this program in the first place um, but um, I, the way I make the adjustments um, is on the water adjustment page I come in here and I make sure RO water is shown here and uh, double click this and change that to 100 and what that is is this is the um, this line here is my water and I tap or it would be if I had a water report it's all shown zeros at the moment because I don't have that and this one here is my oral water and basically this hundred means I'm using all from this and nothing from this so this that means that our tab has nothing to do with anything um, by the way the oral water here is just the the average wa oral water as determined by the brewing water spreadsheet I mean you might want to get your oral water tested for instance and put in your exact values in there um, um, on on that front, um, this page is not the not entirely um, ignored in my case because um, you want to change this if you're in Europe um, or if you're using metric to um, to liters. Now, when you change that to liters, it doesn't just change that to liters. If I go into the grain bill page, it's changed to kilograms and grams here too. So um, also, it doesn't flick around. So um, if you put in your your weight in pounds and then change that to the metric system then um you would um uh, it would stay the whatever figure you put in, in pounds it wouldn't convert to kilo so you want to change that thing first also i always change this here as well from love bond to e b c because it just happens to suit um me so make those changes first um so uh, then I also, d I don't do any sparge, so I, I can afford to ignore this page here and the way I do that, I, I don't even know if I have to do this, I just type in zero in there and I go to the water adjustment page and I put in zero for my sparge water. Now, um, I don't, I haven't really looked into the sparge side of it that much, but as far as I can understand, it's simply that we've got two different sets of water if you're sparging because you can't put these three salts into the sparge water um, neither can you put acid malt into the sparge water which means that you've got limited control over the acidification of the sparge water which means that you uh, they've given you this tab here to add in the lactic acid or whatever you want however all that said i don't really fully understand this side of the um the program so I haven't really tried it out so if you're using this tab um, you'd want to double check what I've said um, um, which leaves us in this case with just the grain bill and the water adjustment tabs 
Now, if you go into the water adjustment tab, it's telling you here under the mash pH that the, that's not valid until you've got the grain entered on the grain page. So I, what you do is you go into the grain page and you type in your grain. Now, um, this, well, this would be for per, per brew, say. Uh, however, you could just, well, you could, you could, you could just have a, a there's ways around doing it for um, every brew, but by right you should um, make put in your grain bill properly for each brew individually and work out the um, the mash pH and the salts for that particular brew. But I've discovered that if you're brewing a similar brew to one you've already worked out, that making small changes to this don't really affect the mash pH and don't really affect uh, the salts either well they don't affect the salts at all and as long as you're happy with the profile which I haven't got to yet but I'll get to it in a minute but anyway um, so the way this works is um, you you just th this column here is just a label so that you don't get mixed up you can call each each item on your bill whatever you want obviously you have to pick anywhere it's got red it's got a drop down so you just pick whether it's a base crystal rolls roll store that's where you can put in an acid malt here too if you needed to acidify the malt or the mash um and it, it, you know this is a prediction of what the mash is going to be like so this is all before you mash in you do you would do all of this and if you've gotten everything right then if you did take a mash ph reading 15 minutes or whatever into the mash it should match with whatever you had predicted with the software that's the that's the idea of it anyway um so anyway um you, you you just type whatever was your first uh grain on the bill select whether it's um base crystal roast type in the kilos this uh, i think this is just for you know this is pounds and ounces in the imperial system so i think you can put them all into the kilos or whatever way you want to do it um put it you need to the ebc for the the, the uh, malt obviously as well and you will go through that so um you know you could you can just delete ones that you're not using um you have to make sure that you delete the the grams or you know uh, the, these have no the, these have no bearing on anything because there's no grams or kilos in here so you don't have to go to the trouble if deleting all those so i have um i have one that i was just um a, a different one that it was working rather than typing in everything so I can just I can just paste in those from an, uh, an existing brew and um, th this isn't really relevant until I've got the right water as well so this was for a uh, 18.56 liters and you have to have that in here as well for the total and um, it's telling me here that the mash pH is too low and if I go back to the grain bill, it's the same thing here. So um, it's telling you what I should have here. Sorry, it's too high, uh, actually. Now, um, that's all I need to do on this page. Um, and I'm not worried about the mash pH yet because I have to do all the adjustments. So to do the adjustments, you first, and they, you know the adjustments will affect the mash pH. So first of all, you want to pick a profile. So you pick your profile up here and um, it's got all these different profiles of areas and different types of brew. Um, they all come from this section down here. So um, this is just where it gets its data from. And the reason that's important is because, oh, well, there's where the RO water. So if your RO water was different, uh, you, you, if, if I tested my RO water and it was um, 12 bicarbonate, for instance, I just changed that to 12 and that would be that. But um, I don't know what mine is, so I'm just going with their with their one. But um, what is important is this user custom one here. So um, you know, um, I could I, I can make this my custom profile here, and I can put in if I ha if I had a particular profile that I thought that I wanted to get. I'm just going to copy this one. Um, but and suppose um, I just wanted lots of. Um, uh, sulfate or whatever it is and or something like that it's probably a stupid profile i don't know but anyway um i can i can use that particular second last line down there 
um, by putting in, a, you know, I could grab a profile from somewhere that wasn't on this list, and now it's my custom profile is in there, and that's that. Uh, when it does that, you need to click on a blue thing. Uh, but that's the profile there that I put in. But I'm not going to use that. It's not really a profile. I don't know what that is. Uh, but then I'm just going to use the, um, the the pale ale profile. Um, so the way this works then is um, this. Uh, I, I, won't, I won't go to the trouble of explaining all those numbers in there. Um, obviously, that's your RO water, and that's your that would be your water at the top if you had a water report done. Um, but this is kind of what I have, and um, these get a bit complicated. But uh, they, they're lines like what I'm trying to get to achieve this, what I need to add to the RO water to achieve this. But really, all you have to do is make the bottom line here match the top line. So. Um, how you do that so I need to add 139 to this one here to make it equal to 140 in the case of calcium so um, say if I wanted to do that with calcium I'm gonna look here for the particular minerals that have calcium so I've got a choice of gypsum calcium chloride chalk or pickling lime so if I pick gypsum for instance and I this is a grams per liter so if I picked them um, you know uh, one gram per liter that's given me 232.8 of um, of um, calcium, which is obviously way too much. I'm just going to make that point 0.6, eh? and uh, that's pretty pretty much right. But as well as that, calcium also gives sulfate, so it's given me all my sulfate and more, so that's too much. So I would just do point. So I'm just going to go for 0.4 and now I can also get calcium that's not enough calcium there but I can get calcium with the calcium chloride so I'll just go um, for 0.2 of that maybe and I'm not too far out here but I, I'd tweak that obviously and uh, so I, I don't have enough sulfate now so I can get that from Epsom salts so I can just do 0.2 there and now my sulfate starting to be right Epsom salts or the magnesium is pretty right now because I got it from that and you would just work your way through the um, the salts until you got it to be roughly right, I'll just put it on pause and see if I can get that kind of better um, ok so I've done some of them, you know they're 8 by a bit they're, it's very hard to get them exactly right but you can spend a good bit of time tweaking this and you can use other salts here, I mean one of my goals would be to not use too many salts rather than having 6 different um, you know additions to make to the water but you know you, if you could get it in 4 it would be better but um, in any case like I've gotten to uh, within 10 of that and within 2 of that and within 5 of this and within 2 of this uh, there's a good bit of chloride here, um, but it's. Let's suppose I, you know, maybe the may, maybe I had a profile that was actually, 80. but in any case, the the bicarbonate is a little bit different. Um, I'm not too sure about these, but um, some of them at least will affect your mash pH, and I'm pretty sure the bacon. If I want to get the bicarbonate, um, which I as far as I know, I don't. Um, you know, know for certain, but I think that if you're brewing a dark beer, you need a lot of bicarbonate, and um, it only comes from these ones, which you can't put in sparge water. So, um, if I put um, if if I put in a lot of baking soda here to bring up my bicarbonate level, so if I put in say 0.2, I don't know, is that going to work? Right. Well, it's it's gone a bit too high, but. Even if I brought it down a bit, you can see it's after really throwing out the mash pH. So even if I um, brought this down to say 0.12, okay, well let's let's call that right. Let's say within seven, but the mash pH is is out. It's as you know, it's meant to be green, and you can see the mash pH on this page here too. So there's three ways that you can, as far as I know, that you can um, you can sh you can um, the mash pH so you want to lower the mash pH because it's um, it's at 5.6 and I've got a lighter color beer and I want it to be um, um, five, I, want, I want it to be five point under 
So uh, one way is you can add acid malt. So if I was to add some acid malt, uh, if I just added 100 grams, I think, of acid malt, it brought it right down. So that's one way of doing it. Um, and you've still got the, if let's, these are not right, but if, if you can imagine if they were as right as you wanted them to be, uh, you've got the right water profile and you've got the right mash pH, which is the object. Um, so that's one way of doing it. Um, another way of doing it is to add uh, lactic acid to the mat, or sorry, any kind of acid. There's all these different types of acids that you can use. So um, if I put in um, 0.1 um, lactic acid, uh, I actually have never used lactic acid. I don't know where you're supposed to add it, but um, the idea is I've put in a small bit of lactic acid, and uh, it must, I'm not sure, but I'm sure you could figure that out. Um, but it goes into it brought that down so that worked but um you could also um just play around with your salts instead and not use um as much of one of the other you know but i think you do get limited with the um bicarbonate because it can so you know i can only go so far up with the bicarbonate because there's no other way as far as i know these are all going to affect the ph as well now some of them and i really don't know um but see i think that can that can affect it as well if you put in a lot of one of those yeah th so this one can bring it down but it's obviously going to throw these things out so look i've got a huge amount here but this is where you would want to read the water knowledge and instructions and honestly that's um something that i'm well behind in. i was just like i said i'm just i kind of know how to use the program but um the actual how to you know knowing how, what to use here you, you know knowing which affects the mash ph you can tell how it affects the profile so you could you know it's pretty but it's pretty safe because you can just pick one of those profiles and it should be it should be right enough and once you match the profile then that's all you need to worry about as long as your mash ph is within bounds and uh probably the easiest way of doing that is to add as to add acid i think most people would add lactic acid um, or or um, or acidulated malt, malt to the grain bill. So um, when you've got what you want, let's assume that this is the way I want it. Uh, I can go out here and it's telling me um, on the adjustment summary page what to add in. So I can take my 18.6 liters of water and I add in one, two, three. Um, in this case, um, water dish or additions. Uh, I would, I'm, I'm, my plan would be to um, make up uh, enough uh, mash, excuse me, uh, ra rather than trying to measure 8.4 on the scales, unless you've got very accurate scales, that's probably hard, 1.9, you could do enough for 5 brews or something, and put this all in a box and measure out one fifth of it into 20 litres, you know, where you've mixed it all up. Um, one problem with that though uh, technique is that it would only work in theory if it got the exact same um, grain bill but I did notice that if you change the grain bill a bit so if I suppose I just had um, you know 285 of this it it changed it, you might have noticed that there it changed it but it only changed it a little bit so the water profile is still fine it doesn't assuming that you know the it's another pale ale in this case like so if i was brewing a stout or something i'd i'd be starting from scratch so you wouldn't use that technique for 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 brewing a completely different beer but if 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 you did have um if you did have all similar similar beers you could i i imagine mix up a you know rather than doing this for every brew you could make, mix up a batch of your own salts and um just come in here and put in your grain bill and make sure that the, the, the you, that your um, mash pH is okay. Of course, you could do the same thing. You could achieve the same thing by with with with, with adjusting your acid malt as per your brew year. But anyway, hopefully that uh, that helps in some respect.